What is going on, Herd? Welcome back to the channel, and thanks for tuning in to a video. Today is going to be an informational video, another how-to in the how-to series, and we're going to be showing you the secret tricks and tips on how I developed the tracks that I did for ProLine series and tracks that I do in general for you guys in the community. A lot goes into it. So first off, obviously, we're in the main screen of the creator. If you don't know how to get to here, just press start when you're in online. Uh, go over to the online tab and go to creator. That's going to bring you into this. You're going to be obviously making a race if you don't know that and a stunt race more specifically. Uh, stunt race, not tr special, not transform, nothing like that. Now the reason you're going to be using a stunt race is because of the props that you're going to be using. So the first thing that I like to do, now this isn't going to be mandatory, but I like to find a, a beautiful spot on the map. I like to go over here in like the, the wooded area of Palito. I like to go here in the condensed area where the river is. I go out along the, the mountainside. And what that does is when you build your track, it gives you a really nice ambiance, a nice feeling of where you're at. And, and uh, it just gives you a good, a good look around. So where we're going to build today's is, oh, I have no stinking clue. So this might kind of seem weird where I chose to make this one, but we're going to be right in this ravine here. Actually down by the Humane Labs. Like, well, Black Sheep, this looks like a terrible place. Uh, you'll see what I'm seeing in my brain here in a second. So right off the bat, we need to do a placement. We need to place a trigger. The trigger, even if you don't want it there, um, just place it in the general area of where you want to start laying props. Because without that, you can't lay anything. So we're going to go over to what are called stunt blocks, stunt building blocks. Not the neon ones, but these ones. And I go backwards down the list and I go to the biggest boy on the map right here, the 28 by 48. Uh, changing it to green and yellow. Now, we're not too fond on the yellow, but it's the green that we like. That nice dark green kind of looks like, well, it looks kind of like grass, simulated grass is what we're looking for. So... Here's the thing, we're down on the ground, so we need to go to advanced options, override options. We're going to hit the override. I'm going to hold down triangle or Y, whatever console you're on, and I'm going to press up and climb up on the Z axis, climbing us up off the ground to a point where I feel comfortable. Now see how that yellow is showing? That's what we're going to try to be hiding. So let's do this. If you want to go over and change it from world to local, it'll allow you to move it straight how the, how the prop is facing. You can move it in those direct areas if you switch it from local to world it's moving the prop in the direction of where it's on on the plane of the world that might sound confusing to some of you but i'm sure some of you understand what i was saying there um so this is going to be another relatively smaller track i'm not trying to hold you guys on here for three hours of uh of building and doing all this craziness we really just want to show you guys how to do it well we're still trying to build a decent track let's not lie we don't want to waste a bunch of room by just overlapping them you know what i'm saying so we want to pull this out, and there we go, we're pretty much right there. Okay. Now that's looking pretty good for size. I'm not thinking we're going to need anything more for size. So you kind of want to run around and get really close to your map and render in, because you're going to see these weird little things coming into your, into your map here. And yeah, we got this little light pole, which kind of sucks. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, you're going to actually, unfortunately this sucks, but you're going to go into props and you're going to just delete it. And then you're going to replace this thing to be a little bit higher. Render in one more time. See how it's not there anymore? So that's where we're going to place this one. We're going to back out of that advanced one. I'm going to come up here, delete that, and we're going to relay another one of these as well to the same height that other one was. This is just our base, guys. This is our, this is what's getting us started to where we can start laying some props to make this thing look like a track something that someone built on you know pc or something that's even some people call modded fortunately some people just don't realize you can get this intricate in the creator it seems silly to say it almost seems like you're sounding big-headed or narcissistic but it's the truth that people think that you're modding and some people feel that you're modding in these it is what it is isn't it ladies and gentlemen so we're just kind of getting rid of that i'm not going to delete this thing again but i'm a little upset that that showed but i'll show you what we can do to get rid of that so we got our bases in we don't we're rendered in we don't see anything crazy so let's get this big thing and let's turn allow prop stacking on now what builds the track itself well let's enclose ourselves in figure out how we're gonna start first off that's all like little things that you don't like to think about but you have to think about so right off the bat let's get us a thing that we can kind of pull up on so we're gonna do go back over to our blocks we're gonna go to black we're gonna kind of make like this uh this pull up thing here. I'm gonna use the five, some pitch action, pitch that thing up. This rotation type, you can roll it, you can roll it like this, 
you can yaw it so it'll change it like this you can world heading because it'll do it uh, yeah it just changes it different than the yaw you can pitch it like this now of course we messed everything up but you get what I'm saying there. You can really do a lot of stuff with just without the advanced options. So you can tell just one of them is not going to do it for us. We're going to do this. We're going to go to our advanced options. And this is a menu you're going to, obviously, as you, if you can't tell yet, you're going to become very acquainted with this advanced options menu. It's kind of a pain in the butt in the beginning. I'm not going to lie for you for a second. This is a, this is a pain in the butt. It really is. But as soon as you get the hang of it, it's not nearly as bad as, well, <laughs> as it is when you start. And like I said, it's going to take you five, six, seven hours to build something that looks mediocre, to say the least. And it'll take me, you know, an hour and a half, two, maybe three hours to build something very, very intricate and very, very... Something that I'm that I'm very happy to give to you guys. It doesn't just happen your first time. Oh, I watched Black Sheep do it. I can do it real easy. So I talked to you through a little bit. I just kind of wasted some time. But you've seen what we built there and how we built it. If you didn't pay attention to what I was doing in the screen, go check it out, damn it. Now, when we get up here... I like to just build my parking lots right away when you pull in. So we're going to go with a little bit bigger of a square. All right, now you need to inset these things down. You can't just plop them up here and have that big old curb there. You need to inset these things down. And that's where the time-consuming part comes in. Well, now you realize how long it takes to offer you guys track after track after track and then trying to do uh, you know videos and videos and videos. I'm not complaining. Now, if you guys don't notice, I like to make uh, my track gray. I like to kind of make it into an asphalt looking layout. Another thing that you're going to have to choose is what what size, what width are you making your track? The length of some of the sections, all of that, that's going to come with skill. You need to lay a track down, go into free mode, stance a vehicle up, practice your track out. Oh man, this is too long. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, this is off. And you go in there and you change it. And pretty soon you're like, oh, okay, I realize it. So how wide do you make your track, Black Sheep? Well, this is a little thing that I don't know if a lot of you guys are doing. So we got a two wide, three long, three wide, three long, two wide, four long, three wide, four long, right? So usually a lot of people, they view that this one's, it's too wide. It's wider than Black Sheep's tracks. But the two is, well, it's, it's skinnier than Black Sheep's tracks, or at least some of them. So what the heck is Black Sheep using? Some modded crap? No, I'm using the three, but I'm turning it... Oops, no, I'm not. I'm using the two, but I'm turning it sideways. See, so I have these as my lengths. Okay, do you see what I did there? I turned it 90 degrees. Normally, it's like this. I turned it 90 degrees, and now I have three different lengths of this one width of track, and that's how I do it. So I already know generally where I want this track to go over here. I want this to go like this. I'm going to kind of straighten it out. The cool thing is you have these little grids on your track too, but we got that parking lot that we're going to kind of parallel. Here's the time consuming part is you're going to go like this and you're just going to inset your track a little bit. Each one insets it a little bit. Now I see what I want to do over here, so I'm just going to kind of drop this thing down right here. And now we need to go back to the size. Now some people really don't like the, the, the jagged turns, and it's like, you really can't get too caught up with the jagged turns here in, in GTA for, for track building. It's unfortunate, but if you get too caught up in that, you're, you're going to use a lot of props on just one turn. And that's where your issues come in, because you're only going to be able to build short tracks that way. Does it look cool and look nice and professional? Yeah, 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 it does, for sure. All I'm trying to say is, like, it's just really, it's uh, it's really limiting you as a creator, and don't get too caught up on that. So now we want to cover some length again, so we're going to go into the lengthier one, the, the longest one we have. Now you can build yours in the two wide or the three wide length as well. I'm not, there's no one here saying that you can't. You're always looking at the overlap. You don't want it, you can overlap a little bit, but you don't want this big bump in your track, and that's where issues can start to arise. Match up a corner to a corner, so ours on this corner right here, just matching it up. Match it up like that. Looks like we got that little bump there, so we want to just come up a little bit more, just like that. Overlapped it. So I'm kind of just looking at the track on where we're going, which way we're heading. Still, I don't know if we're coming in this way or if we're coming in this way. We just got this really close inside clipping point. So I'm thinking we're actually going to do something like this. Let's go down to our turn one here again. This, back to our advanced options on our Z-axis, overlap each other, go to the other options. Instead of the Z-axis, if you need to move it around to the other areas. Okay, so this is kind of designating the area we're going to go into. So we got to figure out what... Since this is going to be our inside, this is probably going to be where it kind of ends. So that means we're going to be coming into here with some really high speed coming on an outside clipping point. 
maybe an outside on this outside right here, and then we're going to come into an inside. Now we need to develop the track. Where are we starting? That's kind of, so this is uh, obviously the parking lot. We're going to be coming out onto the track this way. But we're going to be starting, believe it or not, over in this area somewhere. I'm thinking this is going to be a high speed drift track actually as well. We have plenty of area to build this thing. Now you need to look in that bottom right area where it says props. 18 out of 150. That is your crucial dictator in this. Dynamic, don't even worry about it. Pretty much what dynamic means is they're, they're props that can be movable if you run into them. Explosive stuff, cones, stuff like that. Don't count them as your props for your track because it's just like decorative crap. We do want this to be high speeds. At this point in time, I kind of know where to play stuff for what I want, but just understand, guys, that that did not happen overnight. Okay, so you can kind of see where we're dealing with here. We're going to come into this outside. We're going to link it over to another outside. And you got this outside here. Bam, so that's already going to be one, two, three, four points, and I really don't like to exceed six points in pro line. It's kind of where it starts getting a little bit confusing. So that's only two more turns for us. We need to choose wisely. I think this whole track is going to be a high-speed track, though. So that's the interesting thing. Um, and also, if we're going to be ending here, we don't really have to go and do all these designs with the turning all about unless we want something fun as a full track. Well, actually, this looks like crap with all this hanging off and this and that. Well, I'll show you that in the end on the details on how to make everything look good. If you guys know how to paint or how to draw, that first 20 minutes of painting and drawing, if someone that doesn't know how to paint or draw comes up and looks at what you're drawing, they don't think that you can paint or draw very well. Uh, it's because your work does not, it's not a completed factor. It's not done. And that's the thing you need to remember here with this is it's the same thing. This is a piece of art. In which case, why I got so upset when someone started stealing other individuals' work and just claiming it was theirs and they started using it and, and trying to benefit from it financially off of YouTube, that's not okay. That's not cool. Uh, this is artwork, okay? And counterfeiting stuff and just making it as a... If you have that attitude, shove it. I don't really, I don't really care. Um, you have a terrible attitude. It's a horse crap way of, uh, of developing yourself and making yourself get anything or anywhere. It's a horse crap way. Okay, so let me say something. It's a horse crap way of, uh, it's a horse crap way of getting anywhere. Now, I laid this prop a little bit too non-aggressive. It was not aggressive enough, so we need to get a little bit more tilt, go back to our advanced options, trying to get that corner to the corner. Come on now. There we go. Corner to corner. It doesn't need to be perfect corner to corner, but... Ultimately, when you're right there down there drifting, it looks better if it's corner to corner. So I kind of came up with this idea that we're going to have this little action going on here. I'm pretty excited for this little action too, actually. It's going to be a big, big first corner. This one's going to be a little bit shorter of a track than I anticipated, actually. But I'm kind of looking forward to the track already. We're going to kind of keep the keep this going here just for the fun of having a track after you're done. It's fun for practice to not have to just quit drifting right after the line is done. Um, and when these tracks are relatively short, you're almost like just driving through half the track. So to, to make the rest of the track and just kind of build it out like a track is kind of crucial. Whether it be more jagged like this because I don't want to waste a bunch of props or it be just like the rest of it where it doesn't look nearly as, as jagged, that's up to you. That's creator's choice. Zoom out like this to see how aggressive you need to be with your turning. Looks like we need to be a little more aggressive than I thought. Now you're coming to the point where you're matching them up. Now this is where you might run into this little issue. Let's see if we ran into it. Um, see how we have that bump and we're already overlapping. So, oh, it's not too bad though. That bump is not bad. Sometimes you'll like reach up to this point and one side will be way higher than the other side. Usually it's not your first one. The first one will be perfect and then the last one you slowly climbed up a little bit your whole track and then in the end you're like the whole curb. You know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say. So this one that we just it just doesn't match up I'm thinking this is going to look again it's going to be your choice where you want to lay this but this is going to be your starting chicane setup i know it's not a actual chicane the way that we use it in pro line but i've made that clear to everybody so i like to just designate it this way i kind of come up with my own little way of doing it everyone again it'll be a little bit different i do it this way like that i like the tire barrier as well kind of designate where you want the cars to be so i want the cars to come up right to this point uh so now that we have the general track now this is the competitive track i'm going to show you something else here in a minute we have the competitive track let's start adding in a little bit of detail here 